Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spice Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is part two of the installation of the upgraded stereo system in the Coyote CK. This system is not specific for the Coyote CK. It can be installed in any compact cab tractor. Even the installation process is going to be very similar to other brands. So whether you have a Coyote or not, uh, this installation video should help guide you through the installation of this if you need it. If you haven't seen part one, that is going to be a complete overview of the whole system. We go over each one of the features, uh, we take it out on the property, we actually test out the camera. Uh, so if you haven't seen that one, I would recommend watching it. I will leave a link in the description below for part one. I also will have Amazon links for all of the new devices that we installed in the tractor. Okay, so this video is going to be for installation purposes only. There will be no funny business in this video. It is going to have wiring diagrams. There's going to be all of the routing of all the cables, the mounting of all the devices. So, uh, thank you. Okay, so before we get started, let's take a quick overview of the whole system installed. Uh, we'll look at all the different features and then we'll start uh, digging into this project. Quick walk around of all of the new devices on here and features. So right there you can see the rear camera on the back of the tractor. Let's go ahead and go in the cab. There you can see the new Pioneer speaker. Over here we've got the new uh, display and right there is the microphone. And then if you come down here on the left side of the operator, uh, there is the new USB jack for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And we can go ahead and flip this on real quick just so we can see the, uh, the new display there. And that's just a quick overview, so let's go ahead and get started with the installation. All right, so we're going to remove this old head unit. It's really easy. There's a plastic trim on this thing. You basically just kind of, it's got a couple of little compression clips. You just kind of grab them and, and it pulls right off this trim. Next thing, there's a Phillips screw on each side. So we're just going to zip those out. Once you pull those out, I'm just going to slide the head unit out. All right, so we've got two connections here. We've got the antenna. Just go ahead and pull that out, and then you got your main uh, your main power connection with all your speakers and all that right here. So you just push the clip in and wiggle that out, and then that's it. Here's our old unit. So. Losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches up Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief Alright, now that we got all those bolts out We're gonna go ahead and lift the top of the cab up a little bit So if you want to, you can pretty much take the whole roof of the cab off. This would make it pretty easy, and I actually might do that. I just gotta make sure uh, nothing else is connected. Alright, so since the roof is off of the tractor, I'm actually going to put the head unit in now. That way uh, all the wires will just be sticking up on the top where they're now accessible. Uh, I'll just do all my splices up top and then that way I can get this thing powered up and kind of start doing some testing before everything is fully in place. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get this head unit in. Um, it comes with this little sleeve bracket, so I'm going to put this in the existing hole and then there's a couple of uh, little tabs here that you bend over to hold it in place and then it just clicks in, it's pretty easy.
All right, we're just gonna slide that head unit in and it should just kind of click in there. All right, it sounded like it clicked. Now for the time being, you can still see the old screws, the old nuts in there. So the uh, old trim plate actually will clip onto this. Um, it's not necessarily designed for it, but it, it will click on. So now we're gonna take the uh, display and it just has like a plug in the back. So this is gonna plug into the head unit here and it should just kind of clip in as well. All right, so now we can kind of adjust this thing uh, however we want. Pretty good right there, nice and tight to the ceiling. I can still see the mirror, still see um, out all the windows. I think that's kind of, I think that's the spot right there. No going back now. Okay, the next step, we're going to uh, start running these cables through the uh, roof of the cab. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna start off with is the microphone. So here it is. Um, the unfortunate part is I have to get that headphone jack through these holes that I made here. So one of these holes is the mounting hole. The other one is uh, the hole for the cable to go through. Um, in order to get that head through, basically what, what I did was I drilled two little holes and I put the drill in reverse because all that this is is like kind of like a, a fabric. It's, it, there's no, um, it's not plastic. It, it's just like a thickened fabric back there. So I used the drill in reverse and was able to punch through. I drilled the two holes and I used my razor blade and I cut a slot in it so that I could push this through. So I'm going to get this thing pushed through. And then the microphone uh, comes with like a, st a sticky back where you can uh, just stick it to something. I actually ended up um, cutting it off and I got a brass threaded insert that I put in there with epoxy and so I'm going to mount it that way instead. So I'm going to get this thing mounted in there and then we'll continue with the next cable. Okay there is the microphone after I got it all mounted. You can see the wire kind of turns and goes in there real nice. It's, uh, it's nice and tight secure and then it, it's easy to reach with your hand. You can kind of reach around there to tighten that screw and then I just coiled up the excess cable. Uh, and just gonna leave that up inside there. There's plenty of room in there. Okay, as far as the speaker removal, I already have this one removed, but it's really easy. Just remove these four screws, and then it's got a little connector here. Just pop that out, it's super easy. All right, we're gonna install this uh, new speaker here. So here's the old connection. We got a black and red wire, positive, negative. So this connector doesn't fit the new speaker, of course. So. I'm going to cut this old connector off, strip them out, and then I'm going to uh, wire it to the pigtail that they gave us on the new speakers because uh, both of these spade connectors are a little bit different. They're uh, one smaller than the other. The small one is the negative and the larger one is the positive. So you could splice these however you want. I'm just going to twist the wires together and heat shrink them. Uh, I'd rather do that than use a butt splice. Just make sure that you put your heat shrink on there if you do use it before you make the splice, otherwise you're not getting it on. I'm gonna throw a little bit of electrical tape on the first connection, just so it's isolated from the other one. Okay, now we got our pigtail made up, so we got it all heat shrinked right here. And we got the pigtails that they uh, gave us in the box for the speakers. So they can only fit in on one connection a certain way. So we'll go ahead and plug those in. All right, we got those plugged in. And uh, we'll go ahead and screw it in there.
Alright, now uh, we're up on the roof here. You can see the, the back of the head unit uh, after it's been installed. So we have complete access to the back of this thing. So all these little, all these cables are all labeled. Here's one that says uh, microphone input. So we're going to take that microphone that we installed earlier and basically just plug it in. So that one is done. And then we have our front and rear camera inputs right here. So we're going to be using one of them. All right, so we're going to plug our uh, camera wire that they gave us. I'm not sure what this red tail is for, but I'll find out. We're going to plug that in. And then uh, that way we can plug this camera in and kind of test it out once we power this unit up. So next thing we're going to be plugging in is this HDMI cable. It's got a male and a female end on it. Uh, this is going to be for the Apple CarPlay. So we're going to run this all the way down to the um, auxiliary jack down in the cabin. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, USB cable that I ran. Um, you're going to have to pull this cover off. And underneath, there's kind of a hole right here in this back corner. And there's a, uh, there's a raceway that will take you up through the pillar and up into the top. So right here, I've got the new USB cable that I ran. It goes up. So up top, you can kind of see it right here going down through that pillar and then it basically just runs across and I have it running underneath these duckways here and then over to the head unit and then it'll just plug in to the uh, Apple CarPlay jack there which is labeled. So that one's done and then we're going to hook up the camera cable which actually that one is hooked up and we're just going to route that one around to the back and get that one kind of temped in just so we can test everything and see where the best position is for that camera. Right now, I just cut in this tiny little USB jack right here. Um, I ended up, I was going to put this here instead and I was gonna 3D print like an adapter plate for that. Uh, but as I pulled this apart, I kind of started thinking about it and if this switch isn't activating that wiring, then you may not have any power up to the old um, stereo there. So. I decided just to leave this in place, that way all this stuff is still in use if you did want to use it. But um, this is going to be for the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto. So this is a little piece, I'll leave a link in the description below, I'll leave a link for everything. But um, here's the other end of it right here. It's just a little, um, a little jack with a, um, an end on it. And basically all I'm going to do is plug that into our female on the, H on the um, USB cable that we ran earlier. So I'm going to plug this in and put all this back together and then this will all be ready for the Apple CarPlay. Okay, next step, we are going to dig into this wiring. So I've got started on some cross-referencing from the existing wiring on the old radio to the new wiring, which, so they've got a little wiring diagram right here. And then also when you pull out your existing head unit, there's actually a wiring diagram with all your pin, pin numbers right on the top of the unit. So definitely uh, don't I'd imagine no one would throw this thing away but uh, just pay attention to that because that you're definitely gonna need that information so the only thing that's kind of confusing is the camera wire it's got these tails hanging off so I got to figure that out um, otherwise I'm gonna start wiring up the new harness for the new head unit and we're going to start running this camera wire through there so we can uh, do some testing on that camera I don't want to mount that camera until I kind of get it hooked up and I'm going to kind of move it around, place it on the tractor to see exactly where um, the best picture is. All right, here is a wiring diagram that I drew out for this exact installation. The red tails on the camera wires, those will connect to the rear camera power. And then those two little loops on the camera, those are both going to get cut. One of them is for the guidelines and the other one is for the mirror imaging. I would recommend taking a screenshot of this diagram. That way you can uh, go back to it and use it as a reference while you're doing the install. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cab here where all the wiring is ran. So I have all the wiring done now. And uh, you can see the head unit sticking up um, inside the cab here. Now, when I had this thing mounted, it seemed a little bit loose, not loose, but uh, it, it wasn't very solid. So there's actually a little stud right here that comes with the uh, stereo. So I screw that stud in and then on the back side there is a nut and then this little bracket also came with it too. So I actually just 
um, put a lock washer and that nut on there and I bent it and I came through this, um, this bracket right here. So that was an existing bracket for the old head unit um, and it had like a, kind of like a prong that would stick out and go through there just to kind of keep it, make sure that went in the right place. So I just folded that over and uh, kind of pulled, pulled back on it a little bit. That way it would stay real tight on the liner on the inside and then I folded it over uh, and, and this thing is, it's, it's pretty solid now. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, the only downfall is that if you wanted to pull the head unit out from inside, you would basically have to pull the roof off or something to, to loosen the strap. You wouldn't be able to do it from the inside. So I have no intention of pulling it out. If I do have to, I'll probably pull the roof off again. It's pretty easy to pull this roof off. So uh, otherwise, the, um, all these other connections here, they're all labeled. So we've got our USB cable that goes down that I just showed you from uh, for the Apple CarPlay. Um, and then we've got our camera input, our um, antenna, the FM antenna. So it took me a little bit to figure out the camera wiring, but uh, basically you're going to tie it into the reverse input, which is a 12 volt signal. You're going to tie it into that and then you also have to run another cable. So I ran a four conductor because I actually had a bad speaker wire so I ran a new cable for it. So all you really need is a two conductor just for uh, a positive and negative. But you're going to run that around and I ran it with the uh, existing wiring loom. And then that comes out in the back. That comes out in the back uh, right where the camera is going to be going. So. Here are the two jacks for the camera. So all I have to do is just plug the camera into this and I have all the wire all tucked and tucked away neatly. Uh, but this would be the way I would recommend doing it. I would pull the roof off the thing. It wasn't too bad to do. That way you have full access to all the wiring and uh, you can kind of get it in there nice and clean. It just makes it a lot easier. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount this little camera that came with the with the stereo. So I trimmed some of the bracket off. It was just it was kind of big. It was made for a license plate. So I just trimmed it down a little bit, drilled a couple holes in it to mount it. So I already kind of moved this thing around uh, before I ran all the wiring just to make sure that the camera placement was where I wanted it. And uh, I determined that up here on the top of the cab is probably the best spot for it. You can get a pretty good view of any kind of attachment you have on the back. So I'm just going to kind of hold it where I want it and uh, mark out some holes. Alright, now that we got this thing mounted, this uh, cable we're just going to lift up on the back of the cab. It's still not connected yet. And all we have to do is push these inside and connect them. The connections are just sitting right inside the cab here. So we'll get them connected and then the um, cable will basically just kind of fold underneath. Alright, that's it. I got it plugged in inside and uh, the camera's in place and then it's got some adjustment on it so we can kind of get it pointed right where we want it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these bolts back in on the cab. All right, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments about the installation of this system or any questions about the functionality of it, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments below. 
Uh, otherwise, please like and subscribe. And then, do you have anything else you want to add? All right, we'll see you in the next one. I feel like that thing's bringing out the inner animal. You think you could wear that in the bedroom tonight? <laughs> Just don't actually try to drink it. No, I think. I'm just thinking about it already. <laughs> this is gonna take a couple times. Alright. <laughs> I can't. When I look at you, I can't. All I see is your eyes, I see no expression, just your eyes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs>